thank you so much for joining us. This is our monthly Davenport Dialogues webinar series. For those of you who haven't joined us in the past, thank you so much for logging on. Um, I am Whitney Inge, the Director of Alumni and Donor Engagement here at Davenport University. Um, working in the background, I've got my colleague, Eric Dane, who is managing some of the technical side of things. Um, and we are excited to be introducing one of our alumni today, Mandy and I both would love this to be interactive. So without further ado, I am going to introduce Mandy Robbins, who is an alumni graduated the class of 2012. She is currently the marketing and communications manager at Loran Oils and the founder of Burner Boards. So um, I've been really curious about Burner Boards and I'm going to read a quick little bio to introduce a little bit and set the stage for Mandy. So Burner Boards by Riesling was born with a passion for caring for others, including our four-legged kind in our local communities. At every gathering with a delicious graze box that contains just the right amount of flair, we believe we can create a strong community while raising awareness on food insecurity and supporting our local food and animal shelters. Our CTO, Chief Tasting uh, Officer and Cheese Enthusiast, Riesling ensures each graze box is packaged with love and made with high quality artisan cheeses and other tasty items that the humans would be excited to enjoy with friends and family during all of their life's moments. So Mandy, please take it away. First off, I just want to thank you all for attending today, as well as thank Davenport University for letting me uh, be a part of here. I've been a, in a part of a lot of Q&A student panel discussions in the past as an alumni, and it's always exciting to come back to Davenport and to speak with you guys. And um, I am just excited to be able to share with you my passion uh, for food marketing, and it's been a great opportunity for me to be able to incorporate it not only into my professional career, but as well as my personal career. And to get this a little interactive, I was wondering if we could go ahead and do a poll. And I would like to see who's tuning in if they're interested as well in starting a business. Is that something we can do, Whitney? Just very simple, yes or no, share with me here if you are interested in starting your own small business, whether that be a product or a service. Lots of yeses in service and one no so far. Awesome. And that's great too. Uh, it's just fun to see also out here our fellow entrepreneurs and you are in good hands by going to Davenport University for all those marketing and business needs. I can tell you that. So it's super cool to see you here. But again, to just tell you about myself, I'm a DU marketing grad. I've been a food and marketing professional since 2015, working with brands in the food and beverage marketing and manufacturing space. I uh, specialize in content marketing, influencer marketing, product development, as well as PR and communications. When I wanted to start Burner Boards, I think in the back of my mind, I didn't know it was gonna be called Burner Boards, but I had a passion for creating charcuterie when I was hosting events or uh, just eating with my family for our dinner. And I knew if I did want to start a business, I wanted it to have a deeper meaning. And that would be, you know, giving back uh, initiative to our local communities. I'm passionate as, you guys just heard about food insecurity, hunger, as well as animal causes. In June of 2022, I was just making a charcuterie uh, box with uh, my family for us to enjoy for dinner. And I uh, was using a Bernese Mountain Dog cookie cutter silhouette because my background is also doing marketing for the baking and the confectionery industry. And I thought it would be super cool to incorporate that into my cheese board. And you will see on uh, upcoming slides where that comes from. And uh, burner boards just kind of stuck. And after that, I was just all in and I did the research and the work to see what was needed to be able to legally sell charcuterie and also to do it safely. And in September of 2022, I received my uh, retail food establishment license with MDAR, and that allowed me to be able to sell charcuterie legally to retail consumers while operating out of a licensed commercial kitchen. And since then, you can see our impact from launching in September to December, we were able to donate 442 
dollars to local animal shelters. We sold 40 boxes and as well as we taught two classes. Some of the rescues we supported was the Heart of Michigan Bernese Mountain Dog Rescue, Capital Area Humane Society, Willow Haven, and Save by Save. In addition to my uh, food license with MDART, I also have a uh, food safety training certificate under Michigan Cottage Food Law with MDART. And then here's some examples of my Gray's boxes to show you guys. And if you see right here in this corner, that's where uh, the Bernie's Mountain Dog cookie cutter cheese silhouette came into play. And up here in this photo too, as well, is where I operate from my uh, licensed commercial kitchen. And then other boxes, my upcoming Valentine's Day boards and just other gluten-free and special dietary boxes too I've been creating since I know everyone has different special dietary needs. So with my license, I'm able to sell charcuterie to retail consumers. And my other love is developing recipes for dogs, and especially when it comes to dog treats and pup cakes and dog nuts and cookies. And so I have the opportunity not only to um, utilize the where I do my uh preparing a boards at a licensed commission uh, kitchen. They also have a demo kitchen that's made specifically to do food demos and classes. So I've been able to do the dog treat side with that. And you can see some of the fun things that I like to make as well as some uh, uh, attendees for my recent classes. So to get into the grids of this, what are my best online tips for someone that wants to start a business? And um, we'll go more into detail with these slides, but this is some of the areas that I have found most success for me. And uh, so building connections with your online communities, seeking out influencers, brand ambassadors, customers for content. And also in addition to that, reach out to other small businesses because you never know who might say yes. Do your market research with other blogs, forums and tools like Nielsen IQ and Mintel and also use LinkedIn and stay connected with your DU mentors. So building connections online. There are so many different Facebook groups out there, Instagram groups, as well as Reddit online communities and just about everything. So do a Google search, whatever it is that you're interested in and get involved. For me, there's a lot of charcuterie groups I'm a part of, as well as homemade dog treats. They have been a great tool for giving me inspiration behind my upcoming boxes and order drops, as well as uh, class ideas for making dog treats. I'm also involved in a lot of small business groups on Facebook, as well as local Lansing groups that, you know, share upcoming events that are happening in the area. And that's been really helpful for me to get my word out there about my business, as well as, um, you know, be a part of uh, events as a vendor. So it's just a really great tool. Um, and, you know, like I said, uh, you know, reach out to local small businesses and let them know about yourself. Because again, you'll never know who might say yes. And through online social media, email, I've reached out and have been able to not only secure the licensed commission uh, or the licensed commercial kitchen I operate out of, but I've also been able to find small businesses where I can do my classes in as well. Partner with customers, influencers, and brands. You want to look out for those people that are going to fit your target audience and help you really sell that brand. And that's not only just influencers, but it can be also other brands out there. So for example, King Arthur Baking Company, they donate all my flour for my upcoming classes. And uh, Chewy and Nyla Bones and Go Dog, other dog companies out there, they donate dog toys and dog treats for me that I'm able to use as raffle items for my events that I par participate in or giveaway items for the classes as well as social media giveaways, which has been a great tool to grow my uh, platforms with followers and, and engagements. Uh, also to, you know, influencers out there. As we know, influencer marketing is huge and there's no signs of it stopping. So to be able to partner up with micro and macro influencers out there that fit your audience and, and, you know, let them speak about your products or your services. There's a lot of very cool tools too that you can pay for out there that, uh, you know, helps you vet 
influencers, find influencers, and it provides you with good analytics on influencers. So you can get their engagement rates, their followers, and all that good stuff to determine if they would be a good fit for promoting your brand. And last but not least, most importantly, let your customers be your brand ambassadors because that content is free out there for you. And not only is it engaging and organic, uh, other people see that in content and they find it very real and organic and they, they, it resonates very positively. And for my experience, it's helped me get a lot of new customers and prospecting customers too as well to my brand. And last but not least, too, I also do influencer marketing with my dog, Riesling. She uh, is a little social media star herself with her own Instagram platform. And she is an influencer for dog treat companies as well as supplements and bandanas. And it's just another silly but fun way to get involved with the community and also grow brand awareness. And the dog Instagram following out there is a huge huge community and uh it's great too to meet other dog lovers as well that have their own small businesses that are you know important too with their pets for my next tip do your market research and trend forecasting and there's a lot of free tools out there that provides market research trends especially in the retail consumer scene nielsen iq is one that i use a lot to get any food and beverage trends out there and also you can sign up for newsletters and take a look at different blog forums. Uh, so these are some of the different forums and blog posts that I've used in the past to see uh, what's going on in the, the cheese sales business and dairy sales. And also, you know, it helps provide me inspiration too for upcoming boards. Use LinkedIn and connect with your DU mentors. For me, I talk about everything that's going on with my business through LinkedIn, sharing with the community, as well as upcoming events I'm going to be participating in, and just getting that word out there and uh, supporting small business and supporting local. Those tools are just uh, very important. People want to support small business, so that's been really helpful with me to share my story on LinkedIn. And also to be sure to update your LinkedIn account with any license or certifications you've received. Um, not only have I been able to get the certifications for the food marketing side, but I've been able to do a lot of different uh, PR certifications to receive, you know, public speaking and um, to help me out. And, you know, it helps me really set myself apart from other candidates, especially after I graduated and started doing the job hunting process. And uh, again, I, I talked about this with Eric, but D Davenport, my mentors, my instructors, when I was a student worker, they are a huge part of my success and I'm in contact with them to this day. And, you know, they were very instrumental in giving me the advice I needed, as well as the hands-on experience. And again, I think that really accelerated my um, you know, career post-graduation when I started out the job hunting process, it really set me apart. And to this day, I still connect, stay connected with all of them. And what I found with Davenport especially is that these teachers and instructors and um, uh, student uh, bosses, they really care about your success and want to know what you're up to. And I just, that's what, one thing I just really love about Davenport. And uh, thank you. And I wanted to keep, you know, this slide tech nice and short and sweet so that we had some time to, you know, answer questions. And again, I want this to be very interactive. So feel free to fire them away. <laughs> Mandy, it looks like in the chat box, you have Janice saying you have definitely done the work to make your business successful. I'm a DU librarian and alum who came to this to see what research resources you're using and have used. Great job. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. And, you know, it's super funny, too, because a lot of people don't realize there's so much, to, uh, you know, license and certifications you need to be able to sell charcuterie because it's not a shelf stable product. It has an expiration date. And so, um, you know, finding your local uh, state agriculture department and telling them what you want to do and what you need to so get the correct license and certifications because it is you know important to have because it protects our consumers with you know food safety and also to just so that 
you are uh, doing the right things and so you don't face any you know legal fees down the road or potential losing your license thank you mandy um while you were presenting i actually have a question for you have you found because it seems like charcuterie is popular it's everywhere eric and i were just talking about the little salami rose flowers <laughs> but yours with an emphasis on supporting and giving back have have you found that that um helps bring in more business because it's not just about the charcuterie and you're giving back and what's the feedback been with that yeah definitely just being able to um have a support and a cause behind that has allowed me to meet so many people um for instance with our classes um, that I've taught, I've had a lot of foster dog moms come and take the class specifically because they saw it was giving back to the rescue that they were fostering for. And also too, with just seeing um, other, when other people see and hear that I'm a small business, but also care about giving back, that makes them feel good about supporting my business as well and that they're participating and doing something good. And um, that's why I always say too, what I've donated, it's not just me and uh, it's the fact that it's everyone else who sees this and also wants to support these causes and fight hunger as well as support our animals. And it's just been so cool and an awesome experience to be able to meet new people and see that they also share the same values as I do. That's wonderful. Thank you, Mandy. Charcuterie is something that I am very interested in personally. So Mandy, if you were going to make your dream charcuterie box with all of the cheeses that you love, what would that look like for you? Ooh, that's a really good question uh, because it's funny. Every time when I have a new order drop and I incorporate new cheeses, I tell someone, oh, this is my favorite cheese now. And, and I feel like they've heard me say like, oh, this is my favorite cheese a million times, but it's been so fun to experience with different pairings. So my upcoming Valentine's Day Grace boxes are very Valentine's Day fitting. So some cheeses I'm using are some of my favorites. It's a Merlot cheese and a Chardonnay cheese. Both of them are, you know, that hard uh, semi-firm cheeses. And then I have the beautiful Brie wheel that you saw um, on the slide with the heart cut out of it. And that's that soft and creamy cheese. And it's super fun too, to experiment with those pairings and adding on the chocolate strawberries to go with it. And uh, I was just uh, chatting with my group the other day on Facebook about you, a lot of people like to come to me and say, oh, I really like the crackers you use and the, the pecans and the nuts. And, and it's funny to me because I jokingly say, well, what about the cheeses? Uh, but it's because I think people really appreciate that it's not just the cheese that I care about, but I'm I also care about the components that go into the boxes. So I'm using, you know, artesian crackers and um, the best nuts that you can find out there. And it, uh, just not even simple nuts, the ones I use for the Valentine's Day board or honey glazed pecans. So just again, to, to, to pair with that sweet and salty um, and I just have fun with it. That would that would be my advice to anybody too, that if they're building their own charcuterie board, you do not have to be a pro by any means. Uh, it's just add your favorites and you'll get feedback from other people, which will inspire uh, your next boards too as well. Thank you so much, Mandy. I personally just have one final question and then I'll open it up to everyone else. Um, when you were getting started on burner boards, what was your biggest fear going into starting a small business? Oh, I think the biggest fear was I wanted to do it right um, I wanted to make sure I was legally following all the rules and I was, you know, it took me a while to fully launch it because I started in June and then I didn't get my license until September. So it was a lot of, uh, you know, reaching out to my local uh, depart agriculture department, MDAR, being on calls, even talking to the, you know, the um, health department as well. And I think that's what I was the most fearful of and the expenses that did go behind it to get the license and uh, the tools you needed. Uh, but I just like went all in because it was something I talked about for years wanting to do. And I just didn't want to hold back anymore. And definitely, I think Riesling, my dog has inspired that, especially with her 
own success in giving back and being her own influencer on social media. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much, Mandy. Um, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to drop them in the chat here. Otherwise, um, Mandy, this was amazing. Thank you so much. I want to remind all of our guests, um, number one, since it's up on the screen, go and follow her social media accounts there on Instagram and Facebook. Um, this is recorded. I mentioned that at the beginning of our session, it will be available in the next week or so if you would like to share this information with any of your family or friends. Um, and you will be hearing from us again with that recording and along with a survey. We just ask that you kindly fill out that very short survey to let us know uh, what else you'd like to see upcoming and what else we could do differently. Otherwise, we invite you to go to davenport.edu backslash alumni backslash events for upcoming events, um, both virtually and in person. Mandy, thank you so much and everyone have a wonderful afternoon.